Hello, my name is Lily Barna and I'm a postdoc in the Gunter Lab in NHGRI. And in our lab, we investigate genetic literacy and science communication through a variety of methods. So genetic literacy has several definitions, but it essentially boils down to the genetics that you and I use in our day-to-day -day lives. Those with higher genetic literacy are more confident when they go to the doctors, more sure of themselves when making medical decisions, and better prepared to receive complex medical results of any kind. So to measure genetic literacy, our lab developed the Genetic Literacy Survey, or GLS. GLS is based on years of previous research and previously validated measures. It is from that past research that we know we are facing a huge lack of genetic literacy within the U.S. population, and we need a new and updated measure to accurately gauge levels today. We measure genetic literacy in our lab through three main subscales, familiarity, knowledge, and skills. Familiarity with genetic terms lets us know how comfortable you are with words like hereditary or mutation, words that you might encounter in the news or in a health pamphlet. Knowledge of genetic concepts tells us that if, for example, you received a positive result on a genetic test, would you understand whether that's a brand new mutation found in your own genes or a mutation inherited from your parents? The skill of interpreting genetic information tells us that if you receive that positive test result, you'd understand what it all may mean and what next steps to take. For our updated measure for GLS, we found three main areas that we could modernize, language, research, and metrics. On the language front, our lab has worked extensively to prioritize inclusive language that aligns with community preferences without compromising on accuracy or efficiency. One example of this is that many people with genetic conditions do not see their conditions as diseases, so changing the word from disease wherever appropriate was an easy way to prioritize inclus inclusivity without sacrificing accuracy. Additionally, research has moved incredibly far and incredibly fast since GLS first went out in 2013. Some of our true and false knowledge questions had to be updated to account for our greater understanding of gene environment interaction and our understanding that genes are not as simple as they may have seen in our first bio courses. Lastly, from a metric standpoint, we originally used a subjective numeracy measure or measure of how confident you felt doing math and have instead switched to an objective numeracy measure or actual math problem solving skills to see if this has any correlation with genetic literacy. Currently, I'm processing the data from our revalidation within a general population of 1,000 participants. Once validation has occurred, we hope to disseminate this throughout the NIH and beyond. In a world that's more genome focused than ever before, it's critical that we're able to accurately measure genetic literacy levels. Thank you.